You know, there are things I expect. Um, oh, hold on. Uh, let me let me twist my head here. No, that's not right. Uh, this is a combination of upside down and backwards. Um, well, uh, <laughs> hello there, everybody. I'm Sabat92, aka Nightmare, and welcome to the Hanged Man. Uh, you know what? I gotta give credit. This might be a this might be one of the more creative kind of title sequences that they've got here, or at least the main menus. This is actually interesting. I kind of like this. Like, it's like a backward upside down speech at the same time. That's actually pretty good. But um, anyway, welcome to the final installment of the Strange Men series, The Hanged Man. So. After the journey that we have had with the Boogeyman, Sandman before that, and the Crooked Man, it really has me really hyped to see what they have for this final installment. With how grim the Boogeyman got, I'm probably not going to be ready for what we're going to be experiencing today. So, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to do what I did last time for the Boogeyman. We're going to actually listen to the voice cast for this first, for like the first couple of other guys. And then I'll probably swap to doing my own via, actually, no. I, damn it. I kind of really want to try to listen to the full VEA here but we'll see we'll see let's just let's go this is a horror game it contains scares and grotesque content so if you're playing it if you feel the kind of it please attend to the following rules to prevent trouble if these rules conflict with the rules on the other on the site the rules on the site take priority please protect no repurposing resources no reason to bring game files do not cut the end credits from videos of the game check the author site for more information acknowledge that the author takes no responsibility for any trouble caused by the use of this software Oh, by the way, thumbnail template created by Skydiving Quagga. Alright, off to a start. In a snowy area? Hmm. Oh, I'm playing as... Ooh, already liking what I'm seeing so far. Unknown name. Letter, a card, a note in a pencil case. You're a demon child. Someday you'll be burning in sins. Okay, that's pleasant. 135 Womack Street, 617-189-3062. Hanged Man. The tarot card, the hanged man. I've actually got tarot cards off to the side over here. Hmm. I actually think I've got the hanged man. Achievement unlocked. Clue. That was quick. Hmm. The Twelfth Arcana, the Hanged Man. Hmm. I can't remember what the Hanged Man's supposed to represent. I have like a, I have like a, a little bit of knowledge about how some of the Arcanas can be interpreted. Like... One of the common misconceptions about the Death Arcana is that it's doom and gloom. But in reality, the Death Arcana can also be interpreted as a form of rebirth. Getting rid or losing the old to embrace the new. Kind of like, literally very much like a rebirth. At least, I, I that's kind of how I've been interpreting how the Death Arcana really works, but... I wonder who I am. The entrance to an apartment. No reason to go here. A mailbox. Isn't this the same place that Sophie lives? A bakery. It's closed. No, the bakery was in a different location. I. A selection of brand new fishing rods. Fishing implements for sale. Fishing wear for sale. Decorative plant. Some old style fishing rod. Think 
thinking of buying one? You've got a good eye. Those are old school, but still pretty popular. Hello. You go fishing often? Uh, hey, what do you think you're doing? Hey! M manager, I need some help here. What the hell am I doing? What's your name, kid? Why the hell did I just suddenly grab a fishing rod and start breaking it? What the fuck? Maybe I am a demon child. Okay, right off the bat, I got a note that says that I am a demon child, and I will burn in hell for my sins. So, a couple of things here. Also, I'm being referred to as a kid, which means I'm probably pretty young on terms of the bracket. So, let's say, considering I'm walking by myself, I'm probably right before the age of 18, where maybe I'm a runaway. So, let's say I'm like 17, I think. 17, 18, it's around that range. Or maybe I'm in my early 20s. Um... The note saying that I am a demon child could be, well, in a dark way, you could say that could be a potentially a letter from whoever this character's parents are, you know. I said, what's your name? Urgh. What kind of brat just starts stomping on merchandise? I don't know what kind of brat does start stomping on merchandise. Enough, kid. Give me your name and address. If you're gonna stay quiet, I'll let the cops deal with you. Is this your guardian's number? Yeah, not too far from here. Alright, let's ring him up. <gasps> Will! David? So you're David, right? You're this kid's guardian. I recognize that hair immediately, and the hair, and the eye color. Cousin, I'm sorry about what he did to the merchandise. Is this the same voice actor they got for David? Uh, at least someone is, and the attitude on this guy—he won't even apologize. Won't even give his name. Hmm. And also, my name's my character's name is Will, apparently. Hmm. So I'm David's cousin, huh? I'm sorry. I'll reimburse you, so please, just... Well, uh, fine. But you better let his parents know about this. Hmm. Does your mom know you're over here? Hmm. Do you have somewhere to stay? Are we gonna stay with David and Shirley? Come to my place. You're hungry, I bet. I'll make you something. My wife's away from home for a while, so you're fine to stay here today. Okay. David being as, you know, kind and hospitable as he is, which is like one of the things that I've always liked about David, if I can be perfectly honest. He's nice to a fault. And I know that's kind of like one of the, uh, that's one of like the themes for the first game. Granted, it's mostly a combination of him dealing with his depression and all of that, which is a very understandable thing. No appetite? Are you off to bed already? I mute? You can sleep in my room tonight. It's at the end of the hall upstairs. Achievement unlocked. The Crooked Man! Hell yeah. So my name is Will. I don't have a last name, apparently. Shit, hold on. I accidentally skipped him. That was a legitimate accident. I want to try to get what he said. What? Oh, don't worry. I'll just sleep here in the living room. Okay, so if my character's not really saying anything, that can be one of that can be like one of two things. Either he might be a mute, 
Which would be interesting to play through a mute protagonist's uh, perspective. Or... Again, if he is mute, then David probably knows his cousin so well that he's able to understand what he's thinking. Because there are some cases like that where somebody could be mute, but if you're close, extremely close with somebody, it's usually easy for them to tell what you're thinking and, you know, able to communicate whenever you just don't talk. That or David is just really good at reading expressions. Home phone. A calendar. A wall clock. There are flowers on the shelves. CDs and DVDs are arranged on the shelves. An audio system and a few CDs. LCD television. I gotta say, David, you really shaped up. Your house looks... You, your and Shirley's house looks fantastic. It looks really good. Nice. There are small things on the shelves. There are books and photo stands on the shelves. Two chairs. They don't seem to get any use. Well, I mean, if it's just these two most of the time, they probably have these chairs out specifically for debt for guests. Cup cupboards. Refrigerator. There's a pond on the stove. Sink. Microwave. Trash can. This would be the front door, ain't it? Will. Tomorrow. Let's have a little talk. Okay, it's not the front door. Usually whenever you have a front door, but or I, I usually expect there to be a phone around there, but okay, that's not the front door. Okay. Not sure what room this is. Shouldn't go in without permission. Well, at least he's respectful of David, at least. I hate to it's it's kind of a dark thought, but what if, like, David is, like, the only th person that Will can probably, you know, be around? I say this because from, from that little note about calling him a goddamn demon child, like, I, I'm sorry. You're a demon child. Someday you'll be burning in hell for your sins. First off, who the fuck gave him that note? And second... Why is he holding on to it? This gives me an idea here. One reason he could easily be hold... Okay, this kind of goes into the potential of who's ho who gave it to him. Like, let's say he does not have the best relationship with his mom. Let's just go ahead and throw that out there right now. And it's his mother that wrote this to him. One thing that can easily be said for people that um, crave or desperately want the love and attention of their family is that usually they will latch on to stuff, even if it's negative, because it's still attention that they are receiving. So, if this is from his mom, despite the negative of it, he still holds on to it because it's like a letter from his mom. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. I don't know. That might be a bit of a stretch, but, again, just theorizing. Upstairs. Knowing outside. A lot of rooms now, David. Hmm? Whew, warm at last. I ain't just about froze to death in your pocket there, Will. I beg your pardon. I... Well, I... I... Huh? A talking mouse? You hear that? Let's have a talk. Oh, you know he's going to be mad. No. Well, ain't that how it goes? You do bad, people get mad. It's the way of the world. Well, you're already not doing a good job trying to keep this guy calm. <clears throat> so, that tells me that you're the bad voice. You're like a negative influence on him. Pop is... Pop the mouse. But don't pop the mouse. 
Oh god, he's in my party. Closet. There's a pile of books on the desk. A few books on the shelf. There's a scenic photo on the on the stand. Those are dumbbells. Trash can. Clock on the nightstand. Lamp. Cushion. Dresser. What's up, Will? Let's hit the hay. Hey, don't tell me. Are you thinking maybe I should just beat it? Hmm. A talking mouse. So I'm trying to figure this out here. Is he projecting a sort of voice onto Pop? Like, a lot of negative voices to him? Like, maybe this mouse really isn't talking, but he's projecting that. <clears throat> or maybe this mouse really is talking, and he's just feeding off the negative emotions that Will has. Well, if that's what you want, I won't stop you. I'm an understanding rat, you know. You know that, right? Hmm. Well, it's already proven that. Hmm. Can't climb any higher than this. Ow! It's freezing. Let's find a place to stay quick, like a motel or something. Do we have any money that lets us do that? The entrance to an apartment, a reason to go here. Her <coughs> baby? What's that all about? It's frozen over. Did somebody just leave a baby out here? Mailbox. Who, who the fuck would do that? Also, I like how it leaves a snow print so I know where I've been. Highly appreciated. Hmm. By doing this, it makes it to where I know where I'm going and where I've been. Hmm. I just did a full lap around here. Let's see. way else that I missed trash can hmm no oh boy so bizarre wait so was already lost. What else am I missing? Because I've already gone through he Oh, wait. Duh. Didn't even think about going over here. Way to go, Will. We got a motel. Let's move. I'm not sure I should be listening to this mouse. Or this rat. I don't think I should be listening to it. Tell. Man's got pizza. Want it. Juice bottles. Are you sure that's not alcohol? Mountain of pizza boxes. Do you have enough? Kids this day so art sick. Running from home to use a motel? What is it? 
I'm busy watching these Detective Crawford reruns. Get out of here, kid. Oh. Alright, alright, just go. Room 103. Well, when in doubt, when you need to go to a motel, just stare at the, uh, clerk man until he gives you a room. Do not take advice from me whatsoever. Got the key to room 103. Room 103. One. Two. Oh, three. Hmm? Who's there? The room's in use. I was given a key to this room. You on your own? Where are your parents? Uh... A runaway. Uh... Hey, there's somebody in there. Yeah, what? I'm not giving you any room service, kid. Oh, whoops. That's a spare. Right, 103 is already occupied. You don't pay attention to this stuff, dude? Here, try 105. Okay, now move it. What's that guy's problem? Just a big-headed jerk. Never end up like him, Will. Fair enough. Um, uh, Definitely strikes as a seedy motel. Thing in the desk drawers. On them. Home phone. Wilted flowers. Crash inside. Okay. Green curtains cover the window. Detective, what should I do? Should I tell my son what that man did? Oh wait, there's a woman in there. Um, Detective, what should I do? Should I tell my son what that man did? I know he would suffer. I know he would. I, I know he would suffer. I know he would despair, but his trust betrayed. I don't want him to suffer when it's so irrational. Hiding it because it's irrational. That's, be that's easier said than done. You want to protect your son from everything irrational in the world, your only hope is to lock him up in a room. But, I think your son wants to leave the room. Even if it's not logical, he's ready to have it, bear it if it means getting the truth. Go on and tell him everything. This will be a trial for him. Hmm. Hey, it's Detective Crawford. That was the show your dad liked, huh? They sure run some old shows, don't they? Hmm. Hmm. Could this be a representation of what it's like for his family? I mean, Pop is talking about his dad in a kind of positive way, maybe? Well, then again, it's just talking about him, like his dad liking the show. But well, let's go back here. The way the Detective Sh Crawford show was going, it's like the mother was keeping a secret from her son for some reason in a way to protect him, the topic about blocking him in a room, this could easily be interpreted that the, this main character, this Will, he's a shut-in. Either it's his entirely his choice, or it's against his will that he was basically shut in and held away from the world, potentially. So, that might explain why he's very much mute. He doesn't socialize very often, or it's very difficult for him to socialize in some regard. At least... That's a theory that I've got working in my head right now. Yo, Will! The show's pretty good. You wanna watch? Feeling down, huh? Hey, tomorrow, you ought to go to David's and apologize. You didn't come all this way just to do this, did you? 
Hmm. Okay, maybe Pop's not negative. And I'll apologize with you too. All right? Hmm. Again, I'm kind of liking this sort of style. Like, Ten very much. Already overslept a little, huh? Very much, kind of like a uh, silent protagonist. I kind of like it. Boy, I'm starving. Before we go to David's, let's grab breakfast somewhere. I wonder how much money I have. Ooh, there's a cafe! Breakfast awaits! Well, okay. I just can't. Need that. Oh, crap. There's too many people. My own inability to socialize is affecting me now. Uh. Shirley? Sorry, I haven't cleaned up the counter yet. Could you go sit at a table? No. No, wait. That hair. That's not Shirley. I think. Is that Regan? Is that Regan? Sit here. What'll it be? Morning plate sounds good to me. You think you're the same? All right, let's share it. Have you decided what to order? I saw bits of red hair. Is that Sophie? Okay, so now there's some implications here. Because if memory serves, Sophie is around the age of... Uh, uh, what is she at right now? If she's working, she's probably a working age. So she's probably 18 now, I think? She's either 17 or 18. I... Ugh, I think, like, the youngest I've ever seen somebody work was probably, like, 60. Which is... Oh, God, that's one. Ooh, I don't want to think back to the customer service. But, um, I like there's, like, some laws where some students can actually work in all of that. But I think she's, like, the 16, 18 range. But the fact that she says, oh, well, you like them young, that can easily be interpreted that maybe this Will character is, like, 14, 15. In which case, that's... Oh, dear. Don't make fun of me. He's not anybody. Just, I feel like I might have met him somewhere. I'll be damned, though. It is well, actually... sure caught me by surprise. Who was with that girl? No chance she actually knows you. It's a... I'm actually... I'm actually really happy, kind of. It looks like Regan and Sophie actually managed to make up, and now they're friends again. First off, that's good for Regan. Like, from what I understand, she had, like... She was kind of, like, a, from a rich family and all of that, but... Seeing her work in customer service and all that, she's really shaped up to be a much better character, if that's the case. That's... that's really good. That's, just, that's, that's, that's two positives. From being a snot-nosed brat to being a more well-rounded character that's once again friends with Sophie. I gotta give credit. That's good. That's development. I'm, I'm actually kind of happy. what a girl like her thinks not worth worrying over am i right we gotta get to david's place now is it just me or does the voice acting sound a little bit low what's the matter will you're scared you don't want to go back to town Oof. if 
It's cold out here, Will. If you're not going back to town, find some place to rest, or else I'm gonna freeze to death. The Sandman Achievement! Which means we're probably gonna run into one of our favorites. Our good friend, the key. Park truck, the driver looks sleepy. Driver isn't around. Restricted area. Say about that. Probably a house over. Oh. And now I can't see my footprint. I was half expecting that to break underneath me, just saying. Oh, God, my kneecaps. I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing bad happened. Oh, ugh. Okay. Ugh. Hello? Now what's this place? Why is there this huge building here in the woods? Uh, well... Looking at the wire fence up at the top, this is either two things. A prison... or... A institution. Brr, it's cold. We'll get in so we can get out of this snow. That or standard housing in Detroit. Oh, hey, there's a hole here. Only a surrounding wall. Let's go. Hmm. Thing there. Man, watch this. The gate has a chain wrapped around it and it won't open. Damn. There's a nameplate, but the text has been worn away. Thing off over here? There's some kind of event. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me check the front door again, real quick. I want to make sure. Door has a chain wrapped around it and it won't open. Okay, so I have to go through the vent. Got it. Very well. Whoa, that was some fall, Will. You all right? I see Pepsi. Got a flashlight. Turn it off and on with sub key. Oh. On them. Okay. Ants? There's graffiti on the wall. Some cans of spray paint. Now, what would I do with this spray paint? Red spray paint. Hmm. Oh, goody, there's a person here. Seems someone's sitting here, but it's too dark to see. Someone's sitting in a chair. Yuck, those clothes! Must be a hobo. And it looks like he's sleeping. 
Hope he doesn't freeze. Well, I'm already... Oh, go inside. This looks sort of like a confession booth, but this ain't no church, is it? So what in the world... Now, why would they have a confessional thing here out in a building in the woods that has wire fencing? This could be potentially an actual psych ward. Or some sort of institution. Hmm. If that's the case... Oh, damn, we're not looking... Oh, the sink. Confessing, Will? Sorry, I think the priest is out. But, all right, I can fill in. <coughs> Come, confess your sins, O oh little lost lamb. Well, uh, maybe big lost lamb? Yes, considering the size difference here. Hmm. Man, I don't get that at all. There's nothing to confess for. It's just the way things went, right? Is he feeling regret for talking to his parent, like having making an argument? Because usually, there is a few. There's several reasons for whenever kids run away from their parents. Hell, whenever I was growing up, I almost thought about running away from my parents. But looking back as an adult, I'm like, you know, I really was acting like a kid back then. Because sometimes it can be small reasons, but the majority of real runaways can be chalked up to having legitimate reasons for wanting to run away. I'm not entirely sure what to think of this. Like, there might be some actual miscommunication between him and his parents. But again, I have to go back to the note that he received. Him calling him a demon child and hoping that he burns for his sins. Like, was that a message from his parents or a dark? Here's another way. I doubt it. But what if he wrote that himself because of his own self-thoughts? Like, self-loathing, you could say. He wrote that note to himself, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Then again, I obviously have several thoughts about this, and I've already shared those, so... We'll just go and see how this goes. Alright, enough fessing around. We gotta think about what to do next. Is that that hobo? Wonder if he heard that. Hmm. I don't know about this place, but I do know it's creepy. I'm not feeling warmed at all. Let's find someplace else, Will. Yeah. An open Bible. Yep, that hobo's gone now. Won't open? Guess it's locked off tight with that chain. So now we gotta escape an insane asylum, or a mental hospital. They're both the same thing. Scratch that, then. But a building this big has gotta have other exits. Let's look around, Will. Yeah, I think that's what we'll All the chairs lean against the wall. That was a door? Okay. Back with trash. Old documents are arranged haphazardly on the desk. He? Got a key! It says gate number one. Okay. Kind of vent, it won't open.
Nope. Bulletin board is a map of the overall facility. Okay. Let's get this copied and paste. Let's see. So if we're here, to our right is building one, our left is building two, and then further up are buildings three and four. So, in the case of fire, leave the fire area immediately. Close doors, leave the building by the nearest exit. I'll keep that in mind. So what we want to do is we want to go to the right. The door that we want to go. Buildings three and four. This one will lead to one. Here is two. 